And um, this, this, the practice this morning, we're not going to have um, an anatomy focus with this practice this morning. Um, a lot of you have, you know, I'm not saying don't use your amazing ability to communicate to these different places in your body that we've been working on. Um, but I'm not going to be drawing your, I'm not going to be coaching you along in that way. So this practice this morning is going to be um, moving and putting together, uh, you know, movement and then, and of course, breathing. And I will always encourage you to drop into what you know, what you know, what you've been working on, what's really hitting home for you in regards to your ability to, to find places in your body. So keep going with that. Okay. And looks like she's ask, asking for a little neck work. So we, we might have to do a little bit of that this morning. It appears. <laughs> All right. So um, in this, this season of giving, so we are in the, the season of giving. I don't know um, why we need a season for giving when giving, taking and giving is happening all the time, all the time. I love um, how David White would say, you know, you give an impression of yourself. That is something you give. And it's a constant give and take is happening all the time. So um, even as I, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a real shopper kind of person, but, but there is something I would say about that exchange of like, for me to go across the street to give um, to the woman who made the soap, right? I give her something. She gives me this soap that I know she has worked so very hard to create. That give and take. So it, it, that's a really different exchange to me than, you know, like purchasing something on Amazon. I love being able to see the person who made this product, who did this work. Even though in this time of COVID, we don't have the opportunity to do that much of that sort of um, um, interaction. We don't get to have the, the fairs if we like those and to, to give like that. I even last night I decided I'm going to see what I remember about how to knit. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. It's been, it's been a number of years since I've picked up any knitting needles, but I was like, I'm going back and seeing if I remember how to knit and I'm just going to. So I went Jackie and I got some of the, the one yarn and I'm just going to knit some little um, dishcloths to give you know, to my family to, of course, I don't know when they'll be done or when they'll actually get them, but it's not, but you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it is, it is um, interesting to, to just use my brain in that way to, and to make myself sit and go, let's see, but with YouTube now, you know, you got a whole nother way of, of learning. So, so anyway, um, it's just an interesting time to think about how we offer ourselves to others, whether we know them or we don't know them. And, and also how we, you know, connect with ourselves and how we, just how we go about moving through the world. And, and can we notice that this time of year? And can we notice it now when we find um, like a judgment or a label or something like that coming in, in regards to a situation or someone else. So these are just places where we have an opportunity to, to notice more what is our, our response and what are we doing. So in that um, theme, we're just gonna go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Hey, Lynn. Yeah. Um, it's me, Ingrid. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, I apologize for like, sometimes I get up and I, we're, and I have to, I'm called to have an opinion. It's because we're trying to 
fix this bathroom downstairs. So I'm actually listening to you even as though I am walking around. <laughs> um, so, and I appreciate your words and your thoughts. So oh. anyway. Oh, Ingrid, no, no need to apologize completely. Well, you know, yeah. anyway. I, you know, when, 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 when you come to your practice, any of you, when any of you come to your practice on Zoom, if we were all in a, a room together, it would be distracting to have people getting up and going, you know, I might be a little, but we, we are on Zoom together. I am so grateful that you have taken the time to come to your practice oh. in your own space um, at home and that we get to come together. And you get to decide, you know, I mean, we all have our lives and there's distractions all over the place. Right. And it's, it doesn't bother me in the least bit. Okay, thanks. Yeah, not at all. I'm not even uh, really, it doesn't even register actually. Great. Don't even go, oh, Ingrid, she has taken off because, of, right? I, I don't notice I'm so uh, focused on trying to. Yeah teach and uh yeah and my yoga place keeps getting this my where i was practicing downstairs is like it's yeah. a staging area <laughs> like, so yeah no i'm only sorry that on friday i didn't get to hear all of your response to the pranayama i know and that's because i didn't have my computer plugged in and i was a little bit lower on my yeah on my charge and i can't I'm actually just remembering what it was, was the, it was the um, restorative the position. We were doing that movement. The restorative, yeah. And the uh, breathing and um, yeah, anyway, it, it just was, I don't know that I had a lot more to say <laughs> probably. All right. It was really, yeah, it was, I felt a different energy in myself. So yeah. Nice. We'll revisit that that um, that pelvic floor pranayama. Yeah. Uh, probably later this week. Great. All right. So let's go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Yeah. You're welcome to um, close your eyes or cast your gaze down. Connecting to the surface beneath you and beneath that, the, the ground, the ground beneath the surface beneath you. Lengthening your spine up towards the sky. And dropping into your ujjayi. Balancing the ujjayi, the one-to-one -one ratio.
our life like a breath, then a give and a take, a bridge, a central movement between seeing a separate self and learning to be selfless. Our breath. Our life like a breath, there a give and a take. A bridge, a central movement between seeing a separate self and learning to be selfless. the gift of this time, this gift that you give yourself at this moment to come to your practice, to take a seat, to work with the, the give and the take of your breath. There's a physiological effect of, of this practice, even now. There's the psychological part. in this balance, in this, in this joining, if we remember yoga, which means to, to join or to, to yoke, to join in union, body, mind, and spirit. At the bottom of your next exhale, releasing any control of the breath, letting go of the ujjayi. And joining your hands in Anjali Mudra, honoring this practice now, and over time, remembering, you might remember how your practice has transformed you. And therefore, as the, the smallest changes or maybe um, larger changes within ourselves do come out and, and affect our, our interaction with the world. Therefore, you know, there is a change that happens. Resonating from you out 
beyond. Out beyond yourself. So this morning, I'll chant the sound of Om and, and sing Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunatu. It's remembering, may we be protected. Together, may we be protected. Together, may we be nourished. May our practice have great energy. And may this practice illuminate the darkness May it bring light. And may we not hate or dispel one another. Let's take a deep inhale. Sahana Baba Tu Sahana Punatu Savediam Karava. Exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. Release your hands, lift your gaze. All right, we're gonna start our practice by coming up to standing. Oh, whoops, I messed that up. You didn't mess anything up, it was me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Coming up to standing. All right, so coming into standing, let's let the arms dangle. Late, so reaching all the way down into the ground, lengthening all the way up through the crown of the skull. Let's inhale, lift both arms up. You can lift the gaze if it's comfortable. Exhale, bring the hands down in front of the heart, releasing your arms and repeat. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, moving at the pace of your breath. Take one more. And then letting both arms dangle. And we're going to step the feet a little wider, soften the knees, and let's just start taking the, um, letting the arms angle, but we'll kind of bring them back so that they're swinging through the air and they can tap into the body. Deep breathing. Breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. So we're going to be doing the straw breath. 
you're gonna exhale out the mouth quickly like you're blowing out a candle when you're ready. Five, four, three, two, one, and then you let the body come back. Let the arms slow themselves down. Deep breathing in through the nose. And then let's step the feet back toward each other. And we're gonna take the three short exhales, I mean inhales, sorry. Three short inhales through the nose. And then the exhale is gonna be out the mouth when we bow forward. So you might remember, we're gonna go. <sighs> when you come down, you're gonna bend the knees and open the hands back behind you. So this is the, the, the giving, the letting go. This, the, the inhale through the nose, those three short inhales, those are, are the breath. There's the, the take, the give and the take. Here we go, ready? This is the last one, those three short inhales on the exhale, stay down. The knees can be bent, the arms are just slowing down. And breath comes in through the nose and out through the nose. All right, and then we'll go ahead and shift the hands to the hips. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands on Jali Mudra. Release both arms. Take your right hand and put it up, just bring it. So there's the sternum. You're just gonna walk over to the collarbone. You feel the collarbone right there. And, and go ahead and anchor like the fleshy part, not the fingertips, the fleshy part of your pointer finger and, and middle finger. Anchor those right below your collarbone. If you can be skin on skin, that can be helpful. So you're anchoring right there. And then I want you to uh, imagine a balloon at the top of your left ear, a helium balloon. And then with your next exhale, let that helium balloon rise. Just, and you're, you won't have to go very far and you're gonna feel a little pull under the fingers right there. Take a deep breath in. And the exhale. Great. L release that. Mm. Breathe in. We didn't do the little before test. Let's do one now. Let's turn that head towards your right. Take the nose to the right. Back to center, nose to the left. Left to center, right ear to the right shoulder. You can reach out the left hand if you like. Back to center and left ear to the left shoulder, reaching out the right fingers. Back up to center. Take your left hand and contact the skin below your collarbone on the right. Helium balloon at the top of the right ear. So you're, you've got this contact and you don't have to go far to work with the, the nerves. You're, you've got, you're gonna feel them. So you just let the, the tip of the right ear begin to rise like a balloon has it and you will feel somewhere along that line where your hand is you'll feel a little pull breathe in so the ribs widen 
exhale. And then we'll release the hand. Let's take the head, turn it to your left. And turn it to the right. And maybe just from that little bit of nerve work, you maybe felt a difference. Okay, we're gonna take our blocks. We're gonna go towards side angle pose. So take a wide stance. You're gonna go to your left first. So let's have you turn your left foot out, right foot in, I'll be in your mirror. There's a block at the left outer shin. When you're ready, inhale, take the arms out. And exhale, Parsvakonasana, side angle. So the breath, drawing the breath in, taking the breath in. The exhale, letting go. As your next inhale rises, come all the way up. Let's step the feet together for a moment before we take the second side. Just simply to notice again, the inhale. And the exhale, so, so, so that you can notice, I did side angle. What happened in my body from that experience? And then we're going to step the feet wide again. Second side. When you're ready, inhale the arms wide. And exhale, partial panasana, side angle. How far, when you take your inhale, where does the breath travel in you? And, and on the exhale, what, what changes? What's different? What does the inhale give you? When you take the inhale, what does it give you? And there's a gift with the exhale as well. Your next inhale, we're coming up. Let's make the feet parallel. If you need blocks, you can bring them around. To the front, you're gonna take a wide-legged forward fold. So when you're ready, hands up on the hips. Exhale, bowing forward. Hands coming down either to the ground via uh, blocks or to the earth itself. Let's have the wrists under the shoulders. So the spine will be long. And, and just, just in this wide-legged forward fold for a moment, go ahead, connect to the breath. Be here, not in the future, but right here with your breath. And then let's take the right hand, your right hand, Bring it into the space between the two, two blocks. Either slide the block over. So if you're using blocks, keep using blocks. If you don't need blocks, just, you know, you've got the, the right hand. And I like to be up on finger pads rather than my flat hand. So taking a, a deep inhale. Using the exhale here to reach all the way into the earth. The feet, 
the back of the right shoulder all the way into the right hand. You're twisting towards your left. Is the spine long? Are you in the center? One more breath in right there, the inhale. Release your pose with your exhale, turning back towards center, taking a moment. And then we'll take le the, your left hand at the midline, the right hand up on the hip. And here again, connect to your breath. And on your next exhale, reaching all the way into the earth, into the feet, into the hand, from the back of the left shoulder blade, all the way down into that hand as you begin to turn towards your right. Spine is long. And the breath is, is deep. The breath is full. What is the inhale offering? And then with your exhale, go ahead and release back to center. And then we'll shift the hands up to the hips. And inhale, come up. Turn your left foot out and your right foot in. So warrior two stance. When you're ready, inhale the arms wide. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. How do you balance that the inhale and the exhale, how do you balance the spine over midline of the body? It's like we come towards the end of the year and here is a very rich time. It's a rich time in our lives. So can we not be too far in the future or hanging on to something of the past? How do we stay present? Then you're gonna release the back arm down and with it, turn the front palm skyward with your next inhale, rising up, rising warrior. Like there's a form of hope. I'm grounded and hopeful. Back to warrior two. And I know there's a lot of strength. I feel it. I feel that demand for strength. And then we'll turn both palms up to the sky. You can inhale, straighten uh, the front leg, bring the arms up, release the arms and spin the feet the other direction. Inhale the arms wide when you're ready. Exhale, warrior two. And again, check in with yourself. Do you still feel the back heel? Is it helping you stay rooted and grounded? What does it offer you? Even though at the same time, you've lengthened out the right inner thigh towards the right knee, how do I do both? How do I stay strong and rooted in my back leg 
while I'm lengthening forward at the front inner thigh. And then we'll release the back arm. Inhale, rising. Exhale, warrior two. This is where, for me, I notice just the demand on my physical self, as in the strength required in the, the vigor of the pose. And then we'll inhale, lift both arms, straighten the front leg, release the arms down, take the hands on the hip, Lift through the top of the breastbone. We're headed to a wide-legged forward fold. And we're going to take the arms forward into downward dog arms. So you can either have the hands on blocks, whatever you need in order to have the legs straight. I like being up on my finger pads, but that's just me. I feel just a little more energized that way. Still working with the ujjayi. So that we're, we're the, by, by working with either that balanced inhale and exhale or the ujjayi right now, it can help keep you in the present. Keeping you steady And then we're gonna walk the hands back, shift them up to the hips, inhale, come back up, and step the feet together. Step or hop the feet together. Okay. So let's take a Vrikshasana tree pose. If you want to be at a wall, please feel free to do that. Um, I'll just in, invite you to stand on the right leg first. So sometimes I like having my left side at the uh, left side of my body at the wall, so that I can balance with my left knee at the wall. So you're going to stand on your right leg first. So when you're ready, shift the weight to the right. So you're drawing that that right outer hip towards midline all the way to the center of the pelvis and unweighting the left leg. Arms can go in any position. We'll release the arms, step the foot down. If you're using a wall, you can turn around. So just noticing your breath. And, and by, by going to the breath and with the the knowledge you have about, you know, okay, so I'm going to stand, you're going to be on your left leg, and you're going to strengthen here, draw to midline, reach to the earth, all those things you already remember and know. Can you work with your breath, breath and, and the strength? It's a different day, who knows? So we never know what each day is going to bring. So when you're ready, take the weight to the left leg. and take the arms in any position. They could be Anjali Mudra. You might have them wide. You might have them up alongside your ears. 
If you can bring the gaze at least straight ahead. Then we'll release the arms and we'll step down. All right, let's turn towards the um, top of your mat. You can bring your blocks there. We're going to go through um, a sun salutation, Surya Namaskar, hands back in front of the heart. Let's inhale, lift your arms, and exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank pose. Using the full inhale to, to move into plank pose. With your next exhale, lightly touch the knees to the ground. Bring your chest down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale to all fours. Plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. A deep inhale in your downward dog. With the exhale, you're going to step forward to Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, Lift both arms. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, we'll take a low lunge, right foot back. Hands can be on blocks or the ground. Can you make that decision based on the ability to balance the weight in your hips. And when you're ready, let's inhale, upright lunge. Your inhale, arms wide. Exhale to plank. Your next exhale, the knees touch down, the chest. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog or puppy. And 
feeling the, the, the giving and the taking of your breathing. The strength of reaching all the way to the hands. And also reaching the pelvis all the way back, rib cage away from the hands. With your next exhale, let's step the right foot forward. Again, block under the hands or hands on the ground, balancing the weight in the hips. Your inhale, rising. Your next inhale, arms wide. The exhale, bowing forward. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. And all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana, arms overhead. Exhale, hands, Anjali Mudra. Release both arms. All right. So for this next part, we're going to do um, Parsvottanasana. And we're going to do like um, uh, using the breath. So there'll be like three on one side, three on the other. So in other words, um, it'll look when you, you'll you step your right foot back, left foot forward. And, and I'll talk, talk you through it that, uh, you know, we'll inhale, we'll exhale on the way down in just a moment. You're going to stay down for a full inhale and a complete exhale because I want you to really be able to come into the pose. And then the inhale, you'll rise back up and we'll repeat it. We'll do three on each side. Okay? Right foot back, left foot forward. You're facing towards the, the hip points are facing toward the, the front of your mat. The right, the back foot has a slight turnout. Drop into your breathing. And then when you're ready, let's inhale, lift your arms. So there's the lift at the top of the breastbone. And then the exhale, begin to bow forward. So you're welcome to use blocks. Legs are straight and you're coming all the way down on that exhale. You're gonna stay present for another full inhale, releasing the top of the breastbone, the full exhale. Your next inhale, rising. You're reaching into the front leg. Exhale, bowing forward. Inhale while you're down there. Exhaling completely. When your inhale rises, you rise. And one more time, go at the pace of your breath.
And then we'll step forward. Standing for a moment in Tadasana. And then here we go. Step your left foot back. And just check in with yourself. Is the, the front of the pelvis facing forward? The back foot turned out a little. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift both arms. And exhale, bow forward. Parso Tanasana. Stay there for a full inhale, releasing the top of the breastbone, the top of the lungs, a complete exhale. With your inhale, you reach down and rise. Take your time and with your exhale, you bow forward again. So you know you're going through um, this full cycle. So really enjoy being present, stay curious. Make sure you release while you're there. Let go of the top of the breastbone and the lungs. Yep, you're rising when you're when your inhale tells you I'm I'm rising, I'm reaching down. You feel the balance. And then when you're forward, you feel the inwardness, the inward turning. When you rise, feel the lifting, the lifting of the heart. Great. And with your exhale, you can step forward. arms dangling, just feeling the practice. And then we're gonna inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, we're bowing forward. We inhale, Ardha Uttanasana halfway. And then exhale, we're coming down to the knees. We're coming to the ground. And if it's okay with the knees, just taking a seat for a moment. You can always put a block back there. If this is uncomfortable, then please don't, don't feel the need. But for some of you, just close the eyes. Bring your awareness to your breathing. Okay. All right. And let's see, we're going to take um, Arda Mati Andrasana 2. So, we might sit up on a blanket. It's just giving you a little height. It'd be good to have a strap. We'll take both legs straight ahead to begin. And we're gonna want a strap with um, a small loop in the strap. Let's see, I will probably also have another blanket available so that now let's have your right leg straight, excuse me. And then you're gonna bend the right knee and bring, I mean, right leg, bend the, excuse me, left knee, bring the left foot to the inner right knee. If this shin isn't on the ground, then shore up that space. Then you're gonna take your strap and put it around the right foot. Take the tail off to the left, around your left outer hip, reach your right arm all the way around and back. 
So it's grabbing onto the strap over there and then left arm forward, grabs the strap towards the foot. This is a twist. Again, ask yourself, what happens in my body on my inhale? And when you release your, your breath, what do you notice? And, I, and when you do release the exhale, are you able to Maybe turn more towards, towards your right. All right, then we're gonna come back to center. We'll take the strap off and we'll switch the legs. So the right foot is gonna to come to the inner left knee or lotus pose, half lotus, if you sit in half lotus. And then you're taking the strap uh, along out to the foot of the straight leg. And then the, the tail of the strap goes around the right outer hip and the left hand reaches back way over there to grab it, yep. Right hand reaches way forward, grabs onto the strap and it might grab the strap close to the foot or it might just be grabbing the strap somewhere along the strap. So you're twisting towards your left. So even though there's a little, um, there might be a little tilt forward, how do you keep the spine long? Even though your torso may be a little forward, how at the same time are, are you turning towards the left? And once again, ask yourself, notice what, when I take the inhale, what is this offering me? Do I feel the ability to lengthen through the crown of my head? You know, how does the inhale fill me up? And on the exhale, what happens? It's dynamic, right? We're not in the pose and we're just kind of like, okay, when's it over? You know, really let this breath embody you. Let it embody your most amazing body. And then on your next exhale, let's go ahead and come out and take both legs straight. And we'll just give our knees a little bit of love. Thank you, knees. All right, so now we're gonna take um, a restorative and this pose, I like to have uh, uh, three blankets. If you've got three blankets, that can be useful. Let's see if I can remember what I, what I, how I set this up. One blanket. Uh, let me use the one of the blue blankets. One blanket. I'm going to take. It's um, the roll the blanket up from the long edge. It's. I'm going to just make a roll here. How does that height seem? I say to myself. So I've got my blanket rolled up. Um, my, a second blanket I'm going to fold kind of in a little bit of a square. I'm going to put that in front. And then I'm going to take a third blanket or pillow if you don't have three blankets. And I'm going to fold it like I did my second one. That one is just going to go underneath. It goes on top of that blanket. 
there's a, a bit of a ditch in the middle so that when I lie over this, there's a little bit of an upper back opener so that my arms are going to go, um, the blanket's coming right, it's right around the bottom of my shoulder blades so that I feel myself coming up and over that that blanket my my the back of my shoulders are down on the second blanket and the third blanket is just meeting the tops of my shoulders and supporting the back of my head I have my arms kind of like cactus pose, but I don't want your wrists to be off the ground. So take the arms at an angle where you can relax the back of the wrist toward the floor. And then once you're, once you're here, I like just having my legs straight. Some of you might want something under the knees. You're welcome to do that. But let's let's just um, for the next few moments focus on just relaxing the breath a little bit, still drawing it in. And let's direct the breath to being in the rib cage. Not not of uh, feeling the belly breathing, but bringing the breath into the rib cage. You feel the rib cage expanding on the inhale. In fact, and then releasing the breath on the exhale if you were in class last week when we did the work with the lungs and, and I talked about how the lungs are in the space about mid sternum in this particular restorative, you can kind of feel that, oh yeah, there's the lungs. So if you notice the breath coming into the belly, just, just nudge your attention back to bringing the breath into your rib cage. If you're wearing glasses, you're welcome to take your glasses off. Now, for the next um, little bit here, on the inhale, can you draw the breath from the bottom of the rib cage up towards the middle of the rib cage? The exhale, the breath simply resting on the way out. The inhale, you're kind of scrolling up from the bottom of the ribs along the breastbone to however high that inhale takes you. And can you, can you count the length of the inhale?
And can you divide the inhale into thirds? So that, let's just say, if the inhale was six, you're gonna use the first two seconds to fill the lower rib cage, the next two for the middle rib cage, and the last two for the upper rib cage. The exhale is still just going out easy. There's a slight pause as you break the inhale into three parts. So whatever the, the length of your breath was. The first third is the lower ribs. The middle third is the middle ribs. And the last third is the upper ribs. If you have been practicing this with me for a while and you remember that we were filling the upper coming down from the top, you're welcome to practice it that way. And if, you, if that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. And then at the bottom of your next exhale, release any control on the breath, let go. And we'll bend the knees, roll over to one side, use your arms to push yourself up. And we're gonna come back down to Shavasana. You probably wanna, you know, Move the rolled blanket. You could always put it under the knees if you want. You could use the second blanket to cover you and one of them to go under the head. That's just an idea.
our life like a breath. There's a give and a take. a bridge, a central movement between seeing a separate self and learning to be selfless. So allow your breath to deepen. that gift of all the millions of things that come together, mesh together, breathe together for you to take that next breath of air. And begin to bring some movement to the body and make a mindful transition to one side Use the support of your arms to come back up to sitting. And bring in your hands together in front of your heart. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your practice, for, for the work you do on yourself, with yourself, and, and with the rest of us, fortunately. If you have any questions,